But first, today the federal government flew a pregnant refugee out of the country as an injunction application was made to keep her in Australia. The 23-year-old Somali woman, referred to as Abian, alleges she became pregnant after she was raped by an unknown assailant in July on Nauru. Abortions are against the law in Nauru, so Abian couldn't have the termination on the island. She was flown from Nauru to Brisbane on Sunday afternoon before being transferred to the Villawood Detention Centre. Tonight, she's believed to be in Honiara, en route back to Nauru, still pregnant. Human rights lawyer George Newhouse is representing Abian, and he joins me now in the studio. Welcome to Late Line. Good evening. Tell us about the circumstances around which Abian was brought to Australia last Sunday. Who accompanied her here? Look, I'm not sure who, exactly who accompanied her. We had been working for about two weeks to negotiate with the Commonwealth Government to bring her here. She'd been incredibly sick. She was the victim of rape, traumatised. She'd lost 10 kilos, hadn't left her room or even her bed for about two months. Um, and we finally were able to have her brought to Australia last Sunday. Uh, she was unfit to fly. She would have flown la on the Friday before, but doctors deemed her so ill that she was unfit to fly. It took them two days before they were able to transport her. So how many weeks pregnant was Abian when she arrived in Australia? Uh, by, by the doctor's calculations, 14 weeks. Now, at that point, it's already very dangerous, isn't it, to perform a termination which most doctors say should be done before 12 weeks? That's correct, and she was, in, she was quite nervous about the situation. She'd lost 10 kilos and was, was very anxious about what was going to happen to her. And we had, uh, on, the, on the advice of our specialists, suggested that she get proper counselling and support so that she could understand the process that she was about to go through and, and give her informed consent. That was all that we'd been asking the federal government to do. Uh, informed consent for the abortion. Yes. It, but isn't that what she was coming to Australia for? Absolutely. But at 14 weeks, it's a very different situation from someone at an early stage uh, termination. And she wanted to understand what would happen to her. There's nothing wrong or inappropriate about that. No, but she would have been having some medical treatment, presumably, in Nauru. She had none. No medical treatment at all? She had not seen a doctor since the 3rd of September. Why was that? you'd have to ask the federal government. We actually made a complaint and the response we got was, um, we don't know about any private information on Nauru. If you want to make a formal complaint, you can do that after. But uh, at this stage, we have no idea. We you made just, a complaint. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but didn't you just say that the reason she didn't come straight away was on a medical advice and, and she was receiving medical oh, care, yes. which uh, meant by, she should by the stay end of this, a by couple the, of days extra? Yes, sorry. She had, she was taken to the hospital um, almost in a co uh, uh, unconscious and there she was rehydrated and treated. Yes, yeah, she did see a doctor there but she had no care between the 3rd of September and the day she was found unconscious in her room. So she'd had no counselling, no mental health professionals uh, had any contact with her since the rape? Uh, apparently before the 3rd of September she had one visit by a rape counsellor and, no, and never again. They didn't turn up after that. OK, so I'm just wanting to understand, she was here five days. Why didn't she have the abortion in that time? Well, we had asked the government to get her counselling, to have her ready for that process. Uh, we never heard back from them. And then this morning, at about just before noon, we're told she's being whisked away out of the country at taxpayers' expense in a private jet or through the RAAF. We've found out that she's been taken to Honiara and uh, from there, apparently, to Nauru. But we have no idea until noon today that the government were going to take this action or why they were going to take this action. The department says she had an appointment with a medical specialist here in Australia yesterday which she didn't turn up for. Well, nobody told us. You know, we had invited the government to liaise with specialists, professors of both obstetrics and psychology that could assist in this process. We asked for a conference call, nothing. Now, if she didn't turn up, I, I have no idea whether that's true or not, but I can understand why she wouldn't when the people that she trusts weren't involved in the decision-making process. So are you suggesting that the Department of Immigration was in some way remiss in her medical care? They have been totally negligent in her medical care. 
on Nauru and here in Australia that we have asked for the most basic uh, level of care, consultation, counselling, uh, support and understanding the process. That's all she's asked for and she didn't get that. And you're quite certain she didn't get that? Well, <laughs> I can't tell you why she didn't turn up today because I wasn't informed by the government. But it's a so very big say charge to that. say that the department has been negligent. Well, I can tell you that she had no doctor or medical support from the 3rd of September until last Friday and that was negligent when a woman is a victim of rape and pregnant uh, that's negligent and then to bring her to Australia and not provide her with the care that she needs is also negligent and the doctors are telling me now that the government has put her in serious harm both physically and emotionally. Who, which but, doctors are they? Uh, professors of obstetrics and psychiatry. Who have consulted with her? They have been involved in this process. We've informed. But they've seen her and no, assessed the, her. No, the government won't allow them to. But they've been made aware of her circumstances. Well, and well that, that's a bit different us. to to actually knowing her particular condition and being yes. able to assess her and understand the you particulars of the case. You don't need to see her to know that if she has lost that much weight and been a victim of rape sure. and been traumatised and going about to go through an abortion that so, you need um, <clears throat> basic counselling. It's, it's, it's medica Medication 101. Mm. Uh, I want to put to you what Minister Dutton said yesterday about cases which he's referred to um, like this one. He calls it a racket. People coming to Australia from Nauru ostensibly for medical care so they can then demand their asylum claims are processed in Australia. What do you say to that claim that this is part of a racket? Our client has never made any asylum claim here. She's never made any claim to stay in Australia permanently. All she asked to do was be cared for and receive a termination. And the government but she was has five, treated she her. She was here five days without a termination. And she was dazed, confused, traumatised, and had not and, had. And we hear and from the department not, she had an appointment yesterday which she didn't attend. The government is in control of this woman. She has no independent ability to do anything. Um, I don't accept that as an answer. We reached out to the government. We invited them to assist. We, uh, invi we invited them to work with us to ensure that the process happened and they didn't take up the offer. I'm going to also put to you the other thing uh, Mr Dutton has said. He said the Immigration Department now has 200 people in this category that come here ostensibly for medical care and then don't leave, refuse Two, to leave. 200 rape victims? No, 200 people who come here seeking medical attention and then don't leave. How many of them leave? have been through what this woman's been through? She's but 23 years old. You can old. see what they're saying. She's been raped. She was unco found unconscious. She was unfit to fly. She lost 10 kilos. I, I don't see any racket in that. She got no medical treatment on the island. If Minister Dutton wanted to look after people and ensure that they didn't come to Australia, he might look at the level of treatment that people are getting well, on the island. Well, he says that, that um, Australian taxpayers have put $11 million into providing a hospital within the regional processing centre and a further $26 million into refurbishing the Nauruan Hospital. And the department tells us there are 40 medical staff, many of them Australian trained, including mental health specialists and an obstetrician. That's wonderful. Why didn't she get any attention then from a single healthcare professional from the 3rd of September until she was found unconscious? Maybe the minister could explain that. We look forward to hearing an explanation indeed. George Newhouse, thank you very much for coming in.